Hello, I'm Robin Worley. Welcome to Lenscraft. Today, we're continuing our series of Affinity Photo Tutorials by introducing the Develop Persona. This video will help you navigate your way around the Develop Persona interface, and you'll learn about important tools that can make your life editing photos much easier. To use the develop persona, you need to have an image open and a pixel layer selected. If you watch the first video in the series, you'll recall a pixel layer is just an image. If you don't have a pixel layer selected, Affinity Photo displays a warning message. Another way to access the develop persona is by opening a raw file. When you open a raw file, it's automatically loaded into the develop persona. This is a Fuji X-T2 RAW file I used in the previous tutorial. You can download the file from my website if you want to follow along. I'll put the details about where to find it in the video information below. Once the image loads, you're faced with an interface that probably has a few familiar elements, and others that aren't immediately recognisable. The nice thing about the interface is that we can reorganise it by dragging and resizing the panels. For example, if you're used to working with the Lightroom Develop module, you might want to move some of these panels over to the left. You might also want to separate them out. Some of the panels also have advanced modes which adds new features that you might find useful. You can also close individual panels. All the panels are part of what's called the Studio in Affinity. You can find these in Affinity's View menu. If you close a window in error, you can show it again using the studio list. You can also reset the studio panels back to their default. When you start to make changes to your image, you may also want to watch out for any clipping. That's where the areas of the image turn to pure black or white, causing them to lose detail. Up in the top right, we have a group of icons where we can turn on or off clipping warnings. Here, we can see there are bright reflections on the sand where some clipping started. This isn't a problem as these areas should probably be white anyway. More worrying is the sky, where the lighter clouds have clipped and lost detail. In a later tutorial, we'll look at how to perform selective adjustments on the sky to prevent this from happening. Similar to the highlight clipping, we've also got the shadow clipping. The other clipping indicator here is the tone clipping which shows as yellow on the image. This shows where the mid-tones are starting to lose detail because they're becoming too light or too dark. Whilst we're looking at the toolbar, you can also configure this. If you right-click on the toolbar, you can set it to show different things. For example, we can show icons and text. You can also customise the toolbar to change the icons around. In the Snapshot panel, we have the option to take a snapshot of the adjustments at this point in the editing. When we want to return to an edit, we just click on the previous snapshot we've taken. As we've been making these changes, you'll see that the history has been building up in the History panel. 
We can use this history list to move to a point in the editing which we've been performing. We can also use the position slider. This allows us to move through the list forwards and backwards. The other panel you'll probably find useful is the navigator. You can use this to zoom the image previews in and out. Once the image is too large to fit in the preview area, you'll see an indicator in the navigator showing the display image portion. You can click this to move it around. In the toolbar, we have more features to control the image preview. When we have the image set to preview the changes, you can switch to viewing the original image using the swap icon. If you put the image into the split screen preview, you can also use the swap button to swap which side the preview appears on. You can also view the image with side by side. Here we have the after, here we have the before, and you can swap these around. In our next Affinity Photo tutorial, we're going to take an in-depth look at the adjustment controls in the Develop Persona. Be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss it. If you found the video helpful, please like it and share it with others. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, I'll see you next week for another Affinity Photo tutorial. Thank <laughs> you.